So WWDC is roughly two weeks away now at this point, and it might be my naivete that's causing my optimism, but I truly believe that Apple is finally gonna give the M1 iPad Pro the iPadOS version that it truly deserves. Let's talk about it. So ever since the iPad Pro came out in 2018, with the new redesign, the new model, the industrial design like I mentioned, USB-C, Apple Pencil 2, and then iPadOS 13 came a few months after that, everybody ever since then has thought to themselves like, hey, can we use the iPad Pro as a computer replacement, right? Like, can it fully replace a laptop and a laptop experience? And then especially when Apple released that commercial with that little girl saying, what's a computer? What you doing on your computer? What's a computer? Everybody thought that Apple was kind of moving in the direction where the iPad is going to turn into your next computer. But in reality, Apple kind of created its own little silo of computer-like hardware. Because for the most part, the iPad Pro, depending on your workflow, depending on your use case, it can be your only computing device. But so far, it hasn't fully replaced the computer and it hasn't fully replaced it for everyone. So again, unless you're willing to learn how to use an iPad Pro as your main computer because it's just a super awesome device, it's super versatile, it looks amazing, and the accessories make it even cooler to use and more fun to use in a regular computer, then I usually advise people to just get a MacBook Air. Like it's a lot more familiar, it's easier to use, and you don't need to buy a $350 keyboard and a $130 Apple Pencil in order to get the full functionality of an iPad. And then as the years went on, you know, iPadOS 14 came out and we thought it was gonna be the next best thing and it really wasn't. iPadOS 15 released last year and everybody thought, this is the year, right? This is the year that Apple's gonna allow us to use the iPad Pro as a computer. And iPad OS 15 was one of the biggest letdowns in terms of, you know, innovation and evolution of an operating system because nothing really changed. All the functions stayed exactly the same. Just the way you access multitasking was a little bit different than iPad OS 14. But I actually tweeted this right here a couple of days ago, asking people if we thought that maybe iPad OS 16 was gonna be it, right? Is iPad OS 16 gonna be that operating system that's really gonna put the M1 iPad Pro to that kind of echelon of a real computer where the average person can go into an Apple store that needs a computer and be like, hey, should I get a MacBook or should I get an iPad? Because they do the same thing. It's just a matter of form factor, versatility, and all those other things. But there's a reason why I believe that this year could be the year that Apple finally loosens up the reins and gives M1 iPad Pro users the ability to use the iPad Pro in a different way than we've seen in the past. So my buddy actually sent me an article from 9to5Mac, which I was able to read. We went through it. And again, it talks about this patent that Apple just got awarded for a new keyboard system for what looks to be a tablet, right? So Apple patent describes iPad a keyboard accessory that triggers Mac OS like UI. So here you see an image of, again, what looks to be a keyboard and then a separate tablet or screen or something of that manner. And in the keyboard, you see a little lip that'll hold it up, right? So this reminds me of two different things. It reminds me of A, the bridge keyboard, which I've reviewed in the channel before. It has that same kind of aesthetic, that same look where there's one major hinge that holds the iPad in its place and kind of makes it turn into a laptop, at least from a hardware and from a look standpoint, right? But the other thing this kind of reminded me of was the Surface Book Pro that released a few years ago, I believe in 2016 or 2017 was a Surface Book Pro 1. And this machine was actually very, very cool for its time. I don't know if they still make this, I'll be totally honest, they might be on the Surface Book Pro 4, but it was this kind of tablet-y, computer-like, laptop-like device where it ran Windows 10, it ran a full laptop operating system, but you could also remove it and it turned into a tablet, right? The modes didn't change. You were still using a laptop class kind of operating system on the tablet form factor. So sometimes that is a miss because those operating systems aren't built for those form factors and they aren't built for things that lack precision like a finger versus a mouse click. So I remember when I saw this, actually one of my friends did get this and I thought it was very cool from a hardware standpoint, obviously, but from a practicality standpoint, you weren't ever really using it outside of the actual laptop mode. But one thing that Microsoft did do that which was cool was that in the actual screen itself, they put the hardware in the actual tablet portion of this computer. So they put the actual silicon in it, you know, they put the hard drive in there, they put pretty much everything you would need for it to run. But then on the actual keyboard portion itself, when it did plug in, the GPU was in there. So when you needed to use a computer for more task intensive situations, you would plug it into that laptop mode because without it, you wouldn't be able to get those intensive tasks done. So it does remind me of this. And I think Apple might not be moving towards putting a GPU in the keyboard and putting actual hardware on the keyboard, but from a form factor standpoint, this could be where Apple is going. So if we go back to that nine to five Mac article, you can see that it is a keyboard with a trackpad where you kind of like plop the actual iPad in there and it turns into a dock and then it turns it into an actual laptop from a hardware standpoint. And then if you scroll down, you can see that 
this is what it's showing. So it looks like what Apple's trying to do is create different modes for the iPad, right? So you'll have your tablet mode, which is what we've all grown with, you know, since 2010 when that first iPad came out. So that's gonna be very familiar to a lot of people. And then what it looks like it's happening is when you put it onto this keyboard, a new mode turns on. Probably very similar to Samsung DeX. I don't know if Apple's gonna give us a full-fledged Mac OS on the iPad Pro, because I believe that the hard drive would probably have to be partitioned, kind of similar to when Apple was promoting Bootcamp, where you could put Windows 10 or Windows XP or Windows Vista, whatever it was, on your Mac, but you would have to partition the hard drive in order to keep that OS ready to go. Apple, at this point, probably has figured out a way to not have to partition the hard drive at all to get this done. But you can see that they're illustrating a very Mac OS-like interface, right? You have the Finder, the Files, the Edit, View, Go, Window. You have two different windows floating. You have the AirPlay button over there on the toolbar, Wi-Fi battery. So it looks like Mac OS. And you can see that we also have floating icons, right? So very desktop-like, very desktop class-like. And again, I think it's gonna be very similar to like a Chrome OS or a, Win or a Samsung DeX experience where Samsung has really perfected that moment. And I've been wanting Apple to really take notes of that and kind of capitalize and do it in their own way because when I think I believe the Note 8 was the first one to do it plugging in just your Samsung device to a monitor and then all of a sudden having a desktop class browsing experience is a very major key when you're trying to be a one hardware type person like I am with just the iPad Pro. So in that 9 to 5 Mac article it actually tells you where this patent came from it's by a website called Patently Apple. So if you go onto this website, it gives you even more in-depth knowledge of this patent that was awarded to Apple. So you can see that the hinge keyboard accessory having multiple installation modes for a tablet and computing device. So you can see that you have the actual hinge mechanism, which puts it in there. But one thing that you do notice is if I zoom in here, it looks like it's gonna be using some sort of pin connectors. And again, if you go to the Surface Book, I remember the actual hinge. There weren't pin connectors, but there were these like metallic, like super big and like super thick, like metal kind of inputs that went into the actual keyboard itself, probably because it's gonna need more than just the three pin connectors to power whatever it's gonna be powering. So I do believe that we're gonna be in a situation where you're gonna need an M2 iPad Pro whenever that comes out with this new keyboard. Like I don't see a situation where Apple is gonna allow us to use, I don't really see a situation where Apple's gonna let us use the current hardware with this magic keyboard and this current iPad Pro to kind of activate this new Mac OS type experience. But again, you can see that the keyboard is there, the trackpad is there, there's a hinge mechanism right there, and then you can close it shut and it turns kind of into a laptop, right? But another thing that kind of was interesting is as you keep scrolling down, there's more to these images, right? So you can see that these are all magnets down here. So these little things that is being highlighted with dotted lines, it looks like that's where all the new magnets are gonna be. And it even looks like that hinge on the backside could have some sort of display, whether it's like an LED display, OLED, or if it's kind of more of an analog display, or it seems like you're gonna be able to get maybe battery life indicators, notification indicators, like the name that you put down there, and the, you know, the date and time. So I don't know what Apple's kind of playing at here. This looks very, very far-fetched in terms of what Apple's really been kind of promoting, which is like simplicity, 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 as opposed to versatility. But here you can see that with that hinge mechanism, you should be able to use that as a magnet for your Apple Pencil as well. And then again, here is the three pin connectors that they're probably gonna be moving to. But I wanna know like what's gonna happen to like current iPad owners, right? Some people spent over two grand on the M1 iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage, 16 gigs of RAM. Are people just gonna have to trade that in for the new one? Like what's gonna happen? There's gotta be some sort of universality with these price points especially with the m1 ipad pro spending two grand on it and then the very next year needing to sell that to get another one which is probably going to be even more expensive like i can see this ipad pro starting at like 1200 1300 dollars because apple's probably going to be doing a lot with it right so this is what it's looking like in terms of the patent but then one more cool thing if you keep going down here it looks like there's gonna be another keyboard accessory that you can use with these iPads, right? So you can see that this keyboard accessory is a little bit different because there's no trackpad implementation. So you can see that it, there's gonna be like a couple forms to this pattern. Well, first it's gonna start with a folio case. So it looks like it, you can kind of just put the iPad in there and use this as a cover. But then also there's probably gonna be some sort of keyboard that you can magnetically attach, which I've seen in the past. Third party manufacturers have made that. I've seen it happen. You know, they're not great by any means, but it's possible. Right, so you get the keyboard, you put it on the folio portion that magnetizes on there, but then again, you have the ability to maybe use another iPad or maybe a screen that acts as a keyboard where it's like a cheaper screen where it's not a full-fledged iPad, but it's a screen that's only meant to be a trackpad and a keyboard. So you can ha maybe have this dual display situation, which this looks like a large Surface Duo, which I'm all for, right? More screen, the better, like if it's foldable, even better. But these are all things to keep an eye on with the M2 iPad Pro and with WWDC and with iPad OS 16, because in order to get this hardware to work correctly, they're gonna need to be able to get something done on the operating system side with iPad OS 16 in order to make this a worthwhile experience. Because I'm looking at this 
and I'm ready to spend like three, four thousand dollars on something like this with a keyboard, with an Apple Pencil, because who knows, Apple might bring an Apple Pencil 3. So those are all things to keep an eye on from a hardware perspective. But one more thing that I do want to show everybody, I found another 9 to 5 Mac article, which kind of shows that there is going to be three different modes for the iPad Pro concept, right? So the first one is going to be the standard mode that I said before, we're very used to, touch first, tablet first situation. But then there's gonna be another mode with the Apple Pencil, probably similar to how Samsung integrates there, where if you pull out the S Pen from a Note or from any other device that uses an S Pen, automatically you get like these little widgets that pop up on the screen, which allows you to efficiently use that S Pen for things like drawing, note taking, things like that. And then also when you hover the S Pen over the screen but not directly touch it, it almost acts as a pointer. So I think Apple is kind of going in this direction where if you have an Apple Pencil and you pull it off the magnet, then the iPad is gonna know that, hey, you're ready to use the Apple Pencil for something, so let's get you ready to go by taking away one or two steps so you don't have to go through the settings or do whatever you need to do in order to get the Apple Pencil ready to go. And then finally, it's gonna be a new kind of like Mac OS Lite mode or they're calling it a pro mode where you grab the iPad, you put it on the keyboard and then when the keyboard is activated and in motion, then it's gonna give you this Mac OS-like experience on the iPad. Now I'm hoping that it does come to even legacy hardware, like I said, the M1 iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. Like I'm hoping I'm not gonna have to go buy a whole new computer system because at that point, you know, that's kind of annoying to deal with. But again, those are the things that it's really got me excited about the iPad Pro and iPad OS 16, because again, it's been a while since Apple's done anything revolutionary with iPad OS. Yes, Universal Control was very cool. Universal Control is awesome and it helps you as a supplemental device to your Mac OS computer already because it doesn't work between iPads. It only works if your main computer is a Mac OS computer and then you can use your iPad with universal control. You can't universal control between two iPads. So you're still using the Mac OS computer as kind of the hub to power all that innovation. So I want Apple to kind of steer away from Mac OS and use the iPad Pro as their sole kind of muse of innovation because, because if iPad OS 16 does bring a Mac OS Lite, I'm not gonna say it's game over for Mac OS because the price points are just very different. A lot of people are saying that the reason Apple isn't doing this is because it's gonna cannibalize MacBook Air and MacBook sales. But I don't think that's the case because the MacBook Air is $900. To get a baseline iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard and with an Apple Pencil, it's $1,600. That's a big barrier of entry on the price point side. So if somebody wants a MacBook Air, they're gonna get a MacBook Air because it's $900. Somebody wants an iPad Pro, they're gonna need to shell out another six, $700 in order to get even a baseline iPad Pro. Don't worry about an iPad Pro that turns into a computer cannibalizing the MacBook Air lineup because it's not going to, at least not at this point because the MacBook Air is so efficient, it's very, very cheap for its performance. And I, again, I'm still recommending people get the MacBook Air over an iPad Pro if you have to choose one. So the last few things I wanna leave you guys with with all this information is my top three features that I'm hoping for with the iPad Pro. So the number one is some sort of Mac OS Lite situation or even keep me an iPad OS, just give me floating windows, give me the ability to multitask at a pro level, which is kind of unbelievable to say that just having floating windows is considered a pro feature, but having that would be amazing. I'm not a big proponent of needing pro applications like Final Cut and Logic Pro and things like that because I don't use them, like LumaFusion is perfect for me, Affinity Photo is already pro enough for me, so I'm not a big advocate of, hey, the M1 chip went into the iPad Pro, how's it possible we're not getting a one-to-one -one copy of Final Cut Pro on the iPad Pro? In my opinion, there's no need for that, but I do wanna have maybe the ability to have a secondary user. So being able to have two different people have two separate accounts inside of one hardware iPad Pro, that would be amazing. And then lastly, I want some secondary monitor support with again, those floating windows. So the multitasking and secondary monitor support are one and two. And then again, having multiple user accounts on the iPad Pro would be great. Because again, these iPads are expensive. Like most families can't go out and get an iPad Pro for all five of their family members because it's just not feasible. So having one iPad Pro in the household and being able to use different users is gonna be something that Apple's gonna be able to wanna do. And that just means Apple's collecting more data. So I don't know why Apple wouldn't wanna do that, right? Data is key and king. And then I wanna leave everybody with one last thought and maybe comment down below your thoughts on this, right? Because yes, I'm in the camp where I want my iPad Pro to be my computer. I want it to have floating windows, be able to use a secondary monitor and things like that. But I was having a conversation on Twitter and it's making me think that maybe we're in the minority here. Right, most people, like 99% of people that go into an Apple store to get an iPad, they're buying the iPad for it to be an iPad, to be a tablet, to be a throw around device that you can share with the family and watch YouTube, watch Netflix, maybe play a couple games, you know, use it as a console, things like that, right? Versus myself, I'm using it as a work machine, as a workhorse, as my computer. Like, are we in the minority in that sense, right? Maybe Apple isn't really pushing it because they only see backlash from the tech community. And outside of that, the tech community probably only makes up like 0.1% of their sales or even way less than that. So 
I leave a comment down below what you think. Like, am I in the minority? Are we as viewers in the minority for wanting the iPad Pro to be more than what it really is already? Or, you know, or is Apple just being lazy and not giving us what we want because they're being frustrating and they're Apple? So leave a comment down below about that topic, but also let me know what you think Apple's gonna do with WWDC this year and iPadOS 16. Is Apple only going to give us a little bit or is Apple just gonna forget about everything and kind of like give us really nothing with iPadOS 16 and it's gonna be another year where we're gonna have to wait and be optimistic for no reason. Always curious to know your thoughts and let me know down below, which iPad do you have? Would you upgrade to this new patented Apple product if you need to? Always curious to know. But if you guys made it to the end of the video, leave a little dolphin in the comments below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you're looking for more videos to watch on iPad OS, iPhone, and Mac stuff, click on one of these videos right here. Leave a comment that you came from this video. But I'm out of here. Peace.